Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Dog Recipes. I'm Mandy. Today we're making mung bean pastry. This is a traditional dessert and it's very easy to make. You will need 200 grams of skinless mung beans. They look like this. And here is the package. You can buy it online or in any Asian market. You can also use skin on mung beans, but the color will be green. And the skin prevents the water from percolating through the center, so it will take about one and a half hours of simmering for the beans to turn soft, while the skinless mung beans only needs 20 minutes. You have to fully soak the mung beans, which I have done it yesterday. We're gonna start it from here. Rinse it under running water, then drain completely. Add the mung beans into a non-stick pot. Follow up with one cup plus a quarter cup of water. Turn the heat to medium and bring it to a simmer. Don't go away because it only takes a few minutes. If you forget the time, it will overflow. Once you see it is bubbling, put on the lid and switch the heat to the lowest. Let it simmer for 20 minutes. Make sure you set a timer so you don't burn the bottom. When it's done, the beans should look like this. Check the texture. You should be able to crush them easily. Move the pot off the stove and continue to crush the beans until nice and smooth. If you are using skin on mung beans, it will be much harder to crush and you will have to use a blender to get a smooth texture. All right, that looks pretty good. Add 100 grams of sugar, three tablespoons of honey, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and half stick of unsalted butter. Put the pot back on the stove and stir until the butter melts. In the old days, we used pork lard, but I think butter tastes way better. If you want to make this vegan, use coconut butter. Now the butter is melted, you will find out that the paste becomes runny again. We have to evaporate the excess moisture. This process will take about 15 minutes. I usually divide it into three stages. You can have the heat on medium or medium low at the first stage because the paste is very wet and runny. As the moisture evaporates, the paste will start thickening and separating from the bottom of the nonstick pot. When you stir, the paste will follow your movement, but it still sticks to your spatula. That is what I call the second stage. Now you have to turn the heat to the lowest, so you are not burning it. This is my least favorite part of the cooking because my arm gets so sore. You know what? A like will power me up. Check it out. The paste is more solid now and it doesn't stick to the spatula anymore. It acts more like a dough. That is what I call the third stage. Done. Remove it to the side and let it cool. Make sure you cover it so it doesn't form a hard skin. Once the temperature cools down to a point that your hand can handle, Divide the mung bean paste into even pieces. Each one should be 50 grams. Roll it in between your hands and shape it into a round ball. This recipe is enough to make a 10 to 12 mung bean pastry. If you don't care about the presentation, you can just serve them like this. I prefer my mung bean pastries to be more exquisite, so I will use a mooncake presser. I will link this product in the description. You can check it out if needed. Take one mung bean ball and put it into the mold. Gently press it down onto a clean cutting board with steady pressure. Stay there for a few seconds to establish the shape. Then release it. Look at that, so pretty. I love molding all kinds of dessert. It's so satisfying to see them come out nice and neat.
Let's open one. You can feel that it is very moist. Take a bite. Hmm. It's smooth and creamy. After it melts in your mouth, it will leave a milky and nutty taste on your tongue. <laughs> it's also very eggy, like a cake. Such an interesting taste. <laughs> By the way, this is very filling, so it's best to enjoy it with tea. Mm. I hope you give this a try soon. As always, the printable recipe link is in the description. Go check it out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.